Welcome to this video. My name is Rudi Gahan. I'm a professor of sustainability management. And in this uh, first of a series of three short videos on systematic literature reviews, I would like to talk about the rationale of literature reviews, uh, different types of reviews, and also about appropriate research questions to help you in developing your own uh, systematic literature reviews. Let me start by giving you a brief overview of these three videos. The first one here is about why to do literature reviews, what types of literature reviews uh, exist out there, and how to formulate adequate research questions. And then a second video is on what search strategies can you use and, and how can you use them and how can you report on your um, search methods in an article later on. And the third video would be on how to code articles for literature reviews, how to report on the results and how to make a significant contribution with such a review paper. So, so that you get a bit of a background, I have more than 10 years experience in publishing uh, systematic literature reviews in high quality journals in the field of um, management, sustainability management. Together they account uh, now for more than 2000 citations on Google. So that is something that for many scholars is already interesting um, as a, a rational to publish their own uh, reviews. So let's talk a bit about why to do reviews. Um, although I did publish quite a few of these systematic literature reviews um, quite successfully, I'd suggest that you do not start a systematic literature review with the aim to actually publish it, at least not in the first place. Uh, usually the starting point uh, for any literature review is that you want to identify a gap in the literature. Um, so if you're, for example, a PhD student or also a graduate student who wants to uh, do the first steps for their projects, PhD projects or thesis or whatever, then some sort of literature review is usually often the um, yeah, natural first step in many of these uh, projects. And at that point of time, it does not much extra work. You have to do it anyway, so you can do it in a structured and systematic way, which usually adds a bit of work in the beginning Beginning, but it gives you some options later on. However, I'd suggest that the like the aim of publishing later on this review should not be your guiding principle, your guiding idea at that point of time, because it's quite time consuming and the chances of failure are rather high. That's why I suggest that to postpone the decision whether you want to uh, write your own standalone review paper or not to a separate uh, to a later point of time. So you have more options usually, uh, especially uh, in a PhD project. In a PhD project, for example, it can be um, a, a separate paper. It can be a separate paper anyways, also when you're an experienced scholar or whatever. So that would be then the the published literature view, uh, the, the, the paper, the article. However, you can also have it as part of the front end in uh, a specific paper on another topic, be it a uh, conceptual paper, be it an empirical paper or whatever, or um, also as part of a cumulative uh, thesis, for example, in a short form, or it can also be an inspiration for other papers, non-systematic literature use, especially because you do want to identify this gap in the literature and the gap in the literature usually is the inspiration for the next step of conducting research. Less often you conduct a systematic literature review with the specific aim of publishing it. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I suggest not to do that in the very beginning, especially if you're inexperienced with that. If you have no other uh, options of using the, the results of the literature, because it's quite risky, it's a hell lot of work. Um, and many people underestimate that. They think that, yeah, doing a literature review is easy peasy. I just have to read through some articles, summarize them, and that's it. But that's actually not the case. And I'm going to show you some of the pitfalls, some of the difficulties throughout these three short videos. And believe me, systematic literature reviews are by no means an easy prey. And they are usually only feasible if you can really like afford it to do it if you have the time 
um, if you already have a position where you can afford to put lots of effort in it, or if it has other benefits such as the ones that I mentioned here. And in that case, I think go for it. So if you then think of what to do, there are certain uh, differences in the types of literatures that you could do. I'm focusing here on the systematic literature views, the SLRs, as I use the abbreviation here, as a specific type of literature view, because that's the one that I usually um, published. I also did some other ones, um, but these are the ones that I most often use. But let's start here with the left-hand side to get an overview of the entire breadth here. And I don't claim that this is the full picture, but it gives you a good idea, I guess. So we start here on the left-hand side with a rather small N, so just a few papers that you analyze and that uh, you find mostly in so-called narrative reviews. Um, often there is no predetermined research question and also not, no specific research strategy for these reviews, um, rather small body of literature. And from my own experience, you find them less often in the last couple of years than you found them before, um, because nowadays people tend to move towards um, more of the left side here, uh, sorry, more of the right side here of this uh, figure. Uh, then let's go to the other extreme here. That would be the right hand side. And that is focusing on a very large N, uh, quite a few papers, many, many papers, usually a, a couple of hundred papers, sometimes even more. With so many papers to analyze, you usually do not focus too much on the specific content of these um, papers, but rather on other elements such as um, um, combinations of knowledge, how do um, areas of knowledge relate, how are citations relating to each other, and so on. And that's something that you usually do in bibliometric analysis, citation analysis, and sometimes also uh, computational literature views uh, can be found even with the help of AI nowadays. Um, and I have some um, ideas of first references that you could look at um, specifically from the field here um, of management, but this uh, certainly also applicable to other fields of science uh, if you're interested in that. And then finally, the middle part here, that's the so-called um, meta-analysis or uh, systematic literature views, uh, like totally different, but they uh, have something in common, which is that they usually focus on a kind of a medium uh, level of, um, um, in, the, in terms of the number of literature um, articles that you have a look at. Often it's around 50 to 250 somehow, um, they usually have a systematic approach, how they identify the literature. That's what I'm talking about in the uh, second video of this series. And you can either go for a quantitative analysis or a qualitative analysis, usually actually focusing on the content of the respective um, papers that you're analyzing. With meta-analysis, you usually do a quantitative analysis of um, relationships. So what influence does A have on B? And if you have a body of um, different analysis that or different papers that um, have a look at this relationship, then you can do a statistic meta analysis um, and come up with your aggregated findings on such questions. Um, systematic literatures are different. They are also focusing on content, but they are usually more qualitative in terms of they're looking at different findings, try to find um, gaps in the literature um, or focus areas in the literature, focus on theory or something like that. If you're interested in the meta-analysis, then you can have a look especially at these here as a first. There are many others out there as well um, in terms of Articles that might be helpful for you, method articles, but that is the first shot. And here, these might be relevant for you if you're looking at uh, systematic literature reviews. 
as I said in the other um, video, I'm also talking about how to identify relevant literature, and that is actually relevant for both meta-analysis and systematic literature reviews, and it might also be relevant for bibliometric analysis, citations, or computational ones. So that is a video that you might want to look if any of these is interesting for you. And then, uh, and that is uh, my final slide here already in this short video, uh, that would be on how to formulate a research question that actually focuses the literature so that's suitable for a systematic literature view. And I'd like to first talk about what uh, would not be a suitable research question. For example, you usually don't ask what is the relationship between A and B. That is not a research question that is suitable for literature reviews because you are uh, not doing an empirical analysis, but you're doing a literature review. Such kind of research question on the relationship between A and B would be suitable for empirical studies quantitative studies, um, uh, experiments, or whatever. And they might also be relevant for the meta-analysis that I mentioned before, which is kind of a uh, qualitative analysis of different types of studies on such relationships. So that would be something that you use there, but not for systematic literature reviews. S research questions in systematic literature reviews um, uh, usually focus on the body of literature that you're analyzing and uh, in terms of rather giving you uh, a broad advice on how that could look like i thought of uh, working here with some of my own examples from my own published literature views for example we have here that one on what are the emerging topics contributions and shortcomings in the accident literature on impact investing so that was a literature review on impact investing or here is another one or two other ones actually how can knowledge be derived from the themes insights and theories in the literature on and in this case it was external financing of social enterprises and how do the different theoretical foci assist in advancing future research on the external financing of social enterprises. In this case, um, offering future research options is something that you find very often in uh, literature views as a, uh, as a contribution. And that's what I'm talking about in the third video. And final example here would be, for example, what are the major trends, consistencies, inconsistencies, and also gaps in research, and in this case on social life uh, cycle assessment indicators, and what implications for the selection of social indicators can be drawn from empirical, empirical experience in the field, so again relating to the knowledge that we have, this is why a literature review was conducted um, for that specific research question as well. So I hope this gives you a bit of an idea of how you can phrase research questions appropriately for literature reviews. That's it for this first video. Have a look at the other ones if you're interested. Thank you for your attention.